So welcome back to some more Shadow of the Colossus, where last time, we finished everything we know really what to do by finishing off the hard time trials and messing around, uh, messing around a little bit with the Queen Sword, because come on, it's too fun. And this time, we've made it to the end. This is the final episode for this series entirely, and it's been a crazy, crazy ride. I am turning into a bird again. Stop turning me into a bird. So, I've done some stuff off screen, as you can tell, with the normal plus and all that, but I want to go into a new game plus. This is something I'm very curious about, and some of you guys in the comments have shared the same curiosity. What happens if you start a new game plus with the Cloak of Deception on? Because, uh, I really want to see if you're just invisible the whole cutscene. <laughs> so, let's go check it out. I'm not going to make you guys sit through the whole cutscene, I just am very curious about what it looks like. <laughs> because I think it'd be funny just to have Mono just float on up to the pedestal. So, let us see. <laughs> that looks real weird. <laughs> looks like a shrimp is riding aggro into here. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love where this is going already. <laughs> I, I love that he's like, kind of just phasing the light around him, and that's what's making him invisible, but... Yeah, this looks real strange. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. This is so stupid. <laughs> this just looks awkward as all hell. I mean... I know it's supposed to be Wander in the back of that, but it really just looks like a unconscious... Well, she's not unconscious, she's dead. Mono just <laughs> chilling on the horse. There's also... Her, the rain is going through her legs there, which is strange. Oh, this looks so derpy and I love it. Just, I am so glad they don't take off your stuff when you go into a new game plus. They just leave you with whatever you had on. And now it's going through her, like, shoulder. What is happening? <laughs> I am the ghost rider. <laughs> Calm yourself, aggro. Ah, yes, here we go. This is what I was looking forward to, yes! Float on over to the pedestal. <laughs> Just... I hate that you can kind of see Wander. I, I, I wish it was completely invisible, but this looks just as stupid. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's so stupid, and I love it. Oh, I'm so happy that I thought about that. And thank you for those people in the comments that are telling me to go and do it, because I was saving it for this episode. Ah, beautiful. She has floated onto the pedestal. Alright. Well, the rest of this cutscene is just Wander talking to Dormine, so... We're gonna skip it. Get... Oh, weird. I didn't even notice that, too. I also have the curse skin on, and apparently you keep both on. The cloak is its own separate thing. So I'm invisible with the cursed wander skin. All right, get, get this off, because it's too stupid. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to take off the cursed wander skin, because, uh, you know, it's the finale. He should look the best. Where Where is the... Where, where, where is it? What was he even called? Cursed wander skin. There we go. Hey, nice to have you back in your full human glory, buddy. So, off screen. I've pretty much... I think I maxed out my stamina. I don't think I maxed out my health. I never get. I uh, did get the trophy for that. For maxing out both of those stats. The way I did this was with the Queen Sword, which makes things very easy. You don't even need a fully charged stab to one-shot a Colossus. Constantly load yourself into New Game Plus after you've killed both Valus and Quadratus. Once those two are down, go enter a New Game Plus by loading up that file into a New Game Plus file. And it keeps your stats over, so you just keep killing Valus and Quadratus over and over and over again until you get the stats you need. Now, some people will say that the fastest thing to do is to actually go through all these new games and kill all the Colossus normally. However... I think it's the easiest to go and just keep killing Valus and Quadratus over and over again. They're right beside this giant temple here. And 
you don't have to deal with going across the entire world just to get to a specific place. So, I say that killing Quad uh, was a Valus and Quadratus over and over again is probably the best play you can make. Simply just because of the ease. But, I at least have enough strength to do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And we just have not been able to do it because we have not had pretty much max strength. I'm pretty sure we have max strength. Uh, wrong. I always think it's bottom. Why is it not bottom? Why is it... Eh, whatever. So we've come around... Uh, actually, I need aggro for this because this is going to help out if I have aggro. Aggro! I need you with me, buddy. So, I don't think I'll be going after any colossi this video. There's really no reason to go after any more colossi, so... Around the back here, and veterans of this game know exactly what I'm about to be doing, there is moss here. I never talked about this. And it reaches all the way up there. You have to have at least, I think it's either max strength or close to max strength for this. So I figure what helps is we get a running start and save some grip strength. This can take a while just getting up to this and there are some secrets there are very much secrets up here that we oh so desire so we're just gonna climb all the way up I'll keep talking while I'm going through this because I know some people are gonna be following this and I figure it's a good opportunity to at least talk about some of the unused colossi throughout this game I've mentioned and referenced some of them but I mostly saved all of the unused Colossi stuff for this video. So, since we're going to be taking a long time climbing the tower here, I figured it's a good time to actually talk about some of these unused Colossi. I will be talking about all of them, including ones that never really made it past early development. So, for context, the information that I'm about to present from these unused Colossi are derived from both the Team Eco Wiki, which I highly recommend you check out. They've got some awesome information on there, and I have used the information from that site throughout this whole LP. So, definitely check out that website. And a video from a YouTuber named George Fontaine. He made a really, really good video about uh, talking about all of the unused Colossi and even giving some personal thoughts about what they could have been. So, again... That is where my information is deriving from. So, there you go. Let me hop on. Oh, God. This is the awkward one. There we go. Okay. So, originally, there was going to be 48 Colossi in total, according to the creator of Shadow of the Colossus, Fumito Ueda. That sh quickly got shortened down to 24 due to limitations of hardware at the time, because keep in mind, they were planning on making this game for the... PS3 era. Um, hopefully I can just drop down. Oh god. This is the tricky bit. There we go. So, that got cut down to 24 and that 24 got cut down to the 16 we know today. However, of the, I think it's 8 that got cut out from the 24, there is a lot of information we know about these guys and in some cases we have screenshots. Uh, oh god. Please. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Wander's being weird. We have a lot of screenshots, and in some cases, even footage of these guys. It's really, really interesting. So, I wanted to dedicate the time to talk about them. Uh, am I supposed to be on over... Th oh, God, no, I have to go up. Crap. We should have enough strength. This is what happens when you talk about something and also do the thing. So, let me hopefully climb up this. There we go. Okay. So, the first of these colossi that I want to talk about is Dev named Devil. And he's a really cool one, actually. So, Devil was supposed to be a smaller colossi and would have been in the Devil's Plain area located D2 on the map. I'm not going to have enough strength for this, am I? Um, This is going to be tricky. I can try. I kind of I think I remember where to go. Oh, wait, no, it's right up here. All right, come on, Wander. I'm going to hold off the devil talk for a sec because I really want to make it up here if I can. Come on, Wander. You can make it. You can make it. Come on. Ugh. 
Oh, shoot. I should not have jumped. Oh, thank God. Yeah, so even if you screw up, you have barely enough strength to get all the way up to the bridge here. Which is very cool. So, I'll hold off the unused Colossi talk for a sec because I want to explain this coming up here. If you remember from the ending of the game, this is where Wander and Aggro somehow ended up at. Getting er, at the very end of the game. You can come here. And as long as you have maximum strength, there's nothing stopping you from getting up here. Which is why I'm coming up here now. So, we head to the end here. It's the secret garden. And personally, I have never been here before. So, kind of feels surreal, uh, surreal that I finally got myself up here. I believe there is a, a lizard somewhere around here. But besides that, no other wildlife. You hear birds chirping, but that's about it. There's really nothing here. Except something interesting. If we look on the map, that is... Okay, great. That's not going to show me. Uh, yeah, here we go. Got some fruit. Uh, I am missing every shot. There we go. But this fruit is special. Where did it... Where, is it here? Fruit of the Garden. It is poisoned fruit. What this does is it lowers your stats every time you go and eat one. Why would you ever want this? I do not know. <laughs> I guess it's a good way to reset your stats if you want to challenge, but yeah, no. That's what that does. And this is the hole that Dormin talks to you through all the way down there. Actually, I think that's the hole above the little spring that you get your weapons from. So yeah, let's take our time to explore a little bit around here. Got some cool stuff. And I guess I'll go over here. There's no getting on, to, on top of the tower whatsoever. May look like it, but yeah, no. Besides hacking the game or anything like that, I don't think there's any way to get to the top of the tower of this game. So don't worry about it. I just want to check this out. Man, at least they were handicap accessible during the old times. Why did I... Okay. Um, actually, it looks like I can climb here. Because why else would this be arranged like this? Nothing I can see to grab on to. So yeah, this place is mostly just mystery. There's really not no anything known about this place. All we know is that this is where Mono and Aggro ended up at the end of the game. And I want to show... Can I hop on? Okay, yeah, I want to show you this too. This is the parachute. Parachute's cool. You just double tap X to make it come out, and it'll save you from any fall damage. And you can kind of glide a little bit. Not much, though. Anyways, that's the secret garden. That is something I've wanted to cover for a long time, and it requires maximum strength to do that, or at least close to maximum strength. I don't know if I actually have that or not, but... The next thing I want to cover is that bridge. It is a very long bridge, and there is no way to bring aggro up here. So we're crossing it ourselves, because there's actually something kind of cool at the end of it. So as we're doing that, let me get back to the unused Colossi talk. The first of them, named Devil. Devil would have been in the Devil's Plane, located D2 on the map, if you're wondering what I'm referring to. The map has coordinates, uh, numbers on the left and letters at the bottom. So you can kind of guess on where he would have been, kind of like in between Gaius' arena and somewhere else, kind of like in between Bossaron and Gaius, kind of. So this guy would have been really cool. There's a lot of sketch designs showing Devil wielding a bow and arrow. This never made it into the development phase, so he never got a weapon and... For, in fact, none of the Colossi really uses a weapon. It would have been both the smallest, or was it? It would have been the smallest Colossus we would have had, most likely. Even comparing to Zenobia Sinob uh, and Celosia being around Wander's height. And the way you would have taken this thing down is getting up behind it while sneaking up in tall grass, luring it to different places, and then jumping on its back. It would have been a really one-on-one -on -one kind of fight. 
Along with that, data sheets from the PS3 data sheets revealed that it could have glided? There's code for that? It's really not known of why Devil got cut from the game, but my theory is that there was just really not a good place for him out in the world, and his fight probably would have not been as meaningful as all the other Colossi fight, especially since with how small he is, so... There's that. Next one, codenamed Evis, shares the same name with Malice. He would have been planned at Quadrant I-1 be uh, behind Argus's arena, but it was not implemented likely because of how big that Colossus was and the size of the arena that it would have housed for him. It was a massive Colossus. And this poor thing was cut extremely early. It only has sketches of concept art that was made for it. It was never implemented within the game whatsoever. And that only is shown through the art book of what they had for Evis. As such, there's really no telling how much development was made on him, besides just a couple sketches here and there and some music. A lot of speculations leave this to theorize that this would have been the final Colossus instead of what we got with Malice. Especially since it shares the same developer name as Malice, but this is not entirely confirmed, just hints here and there. Besides that, Evis is a really cool looking Colossi, and I really wish that we kind of got him. Next up, Griffin. Griffin would have been another smaller Colossus akin to Cenobia and Celosia, and it was unfortunately cut early in development, and there are some screenshots that exist of it, but many of them do not fit with the early concept designs that we have for Griffin, at least on the art book. Interesting bits are that it had armor everywhere, and its bony wings were purely decoration. It couldn't even use its wings. So, later designs, such as Griffin B, were not found in the art book whatsoever, but its textures were listed in the PS3 data sheets, and most of its textures were used, uh, reused for Celosia, many believing that Griffin was pretty much a prodigy to Celosia. And according to the art book, you could defeat it by using, uh, making use of its weakness, fire. You were meant to uh, fight it by riding aggro, as with Colossus 10, but it took a long time to retry, so it was a Colossus that was rejected. So, if you're wondering where it used to live, used uh, it lived in an unused area named Valley, and it was tested in there. Otherwise, there's no concrete evidence as to where it could have been in the final version. If I had to guess, maybe somewhere in the foresty area. I think that would have actually been a cool area, either that or in the mountains. And, weirdly enough, it's one of the two cut colossi that never had an uh, idol statue made for it. The other one being a later cut colossus named Saru. So that's really all that's known about Phoenix. Er, yeah, Griffin. Griffin. The one I was about to spoil <laughs> is Phoenix. And I wish this one came into the game, man, because I thought this thing was so cool. Look at the design on this thing. It looks so badass. So it's a taller Colossus, and it had a fair amount of development before being scrapped. There are various screenshots and a hilarious battle plan picture that was posted on Nanako Omura's t uh, Twitter. Well, I believe she's one of the developers on the game. I I'd have to double check that, but... It would have been defeated by plunging it into a lake, indicating that you had to remove some fire blocking the sigil. And it's theorized that you would have you would have had to ride up to it with aggro, then jump onto one of its legs. Then you would climb up, it would fly around, and you would somehow plunge it into a lake. And this place lived, or this thing lived in a unused arena known as Crater. This sort of exists in the final version, but its trees and environment were scattered throughout the world at this uh, at this point. So there's really no concrete location of where Crater could have been. Reason this was scrapped is, according to Ueda, is because Wander would lose way too much health when ejected off of Phoenix. Along with that, Phoenix required a massive environment that just wasn't worth it to keep in the game. So, unfortunately, it got scrapped. And I'm very sad about that, because it's such a cool-looking Colossus. And we don't really have any fire-based Colossi, so... It kind of just sucks. I, I wish we got more of um, Elemental Colossus, but... You know, they were cut for a reason, so I'm not going to dive too much into that. 
Next up, Rock, who is pretty much a spiritual successor to Avion. It, to me, it's a somehow cooler Avion that was unfortunately scrapped due to technical reasons. It would have been an early version, uh, or it would have lived in an er early version of Quadrant D6 called the Badlands. In the, uh, in the final version, this is where Barba and his temple resides. This is the only cut Colossus that had footage. There is a rare promo disc that floats around that shows the fight with Rock at least a little bit. It's only about six sec uh, seconds of footage, which I've probably shown already. And that that's it. That's all we have gotten of Rock besides some sketches and designs and stuff. According to Ueda, you would have uh, you would have had to chase down Rock with aggro and shoot it down to or shoot it down with the bow to go and actually attack it. The reason it was cut, though, is because Rock would just uh, had issues with collision detection. And you can kind of see in the footage from the promo disc that it just kind of clips through the ground most of the time. Yeah, it just it just was not working out for what it was. So, other bits of trivia with that is the complete model for Rock's tail is actually found on an early dorming model from the E3 demo version of the game. And Rock was a more finished of a completely not even developed Colossus named Kubinaga, which was an architect, uh, archetypical unused Colossus that's name was first discovered in the data sheets. Not much is known about Kubinaga, and I'll talk more about what we do know later. All we know about it is there's an early uh, design named Bird 3. Otherwise, most theorize that Rock was developed off of this. So, which is kind of sad. And Rock was kind of a love child for Ueda. He always wanted a long-necked bird colossus. Reach the gates. So, we can try to leave. But the wind... Yeah, the wind protects us from ever leaving. We can never leave this place, unfor unfortunately. But there is a shiny here. And you're probably wondering, what the hell was that? One. At the bottom left. I'll talk more about this once we are done with talking about the unused Colossi. So, I'll just leave it at that. We're going to make the walk back, and I'll talk more about the Colossi. Next up is Saru. Saru is another really cool one that I thought would have been kind of interesting. Interestingly enough, it was based off of an orangutan, its name meaning the word monkey in Japanese. It hung off the ceiling of a cave, and you would have defeated it by dropping it onto the floor. Simple enough. The location of the cave arena is mostly a mystery. The cave was a test area that, or a, te a test arena that was never implemented into the final game. However, most speculate that remnants of this arena eventually turned into Basaran's cave in the final version. And another interesting thing with Saru is it, ha it lacked an idol st uh, statue like Griffin. Uh, it also had various other designs, some of them depicting it with four arms that it would use, some of them with just the two, but most depicted it as a monkey-like col uh, colossus. It is really unknown of why this colossus got cut. It could have been just some weird issues with actually trying to fight it in a dark place that's what my theory is but it was cut for a reason and again not much is really known about saru which is kind of unfortunate some people theorize too that you could have thrown stalactites at it or it would have thrown stalactites at you there's a lot of different theories about what saru's fight could have been but there's no concrete evidence to uh, de yeah, depict of what that could have been next up Sirius. It was a cutoff cousin of Snobia and Celosia, strangely enough. It was a boar like colossus with very little body armor and had mostly fur. Strategy with Sirius was kinda complicated. You it was it is assumed that you had to make it run through Stonehenge like rocks scattered across his old arena. Some of these rocks you can actually find and we'll probably run on over to show what one of those rocks looks like. They're scattered across the world, but a lot of them, or one big one, is located at G7 on the map, which is what I'm showing right here. 
it's arena, aptly named West St uh, Stonehenge. And there's some early footage of Wander traveling around that arena, but it, do it does not exist in the final version. What's likely what that area was now is just the bit of land right outside of Malice's doorway. And it was cut from the final version due to its method of defeating it just not working out according to the developers. So, it just did not work correctly. Next up is probably my favorite cut colossi, Spider. This thing looked cool. And there's a lot of weird theories about Spider. A lot of people love Spider. Resembling a daddy long legs, it was a massive colossus that required slashing its legs while aggro was uh, while on aggro to bring it down. The art book states that you had to bring it uh, bring it from water to land, meaning that it had to be led to the battle arena, kind of like Bassaran a little bit or Celosia if you're thinking about that. Its location that it lived in is very odd. In screenshots, spiders shown to be near the land bridge that we're crossing right now. But it's stated that it would have lived in an unused area called a hillock, located somewhere in the F column in the art book uh, screenshots, and then was moved to D3 for some reason. So a spider could have been in a lot of different places. And one of the reasons this Colossus was cut is because of a cut ability that Wander would have had. Wander would have had the ability to swipe his sword while riding aggro, but this was cut... Uh, before the final version of the game due to it just being an unelegant action according to Ueda. Therefore, they pretty much removed the entire point of Spider's fight and Spider was cut as a result. That is so unfortunate too because it, it's a cool, both a cool mechanic and just a cool looking boss. I would have loved fighting that thing. Some other designs of Spider do show it having tentacles for some reason. But most of it are of a spider-like design and all that. And another thing too, and I mentioned this with Dormin a long time ago. Remnants of spider can be found on the final version of Dormin. Dormin's little spider-like legs on, the, on his back are from spider. And I've mentioned this before, but Dormin was an amalgamation of all the colossi. So you can see bits and pieces of each colossi on Dormin himself. So, Spider was one of the ones that got retained. One of the last few ones is Worm. This is another fan favorite one that has a lot of rumors. It's a giant serpent-like colossus that f uh, featured fro uh, fur on both sides of its body and had a giant mouth. To me, it kind of looks like a like-like, so, from Zelda. The art book states that its weak point was a, fl a flower-like bulb section that was located at the root of the colossus. The code also describes it being able to stretch and or contract. Would have been one of the few Colossus that could do that besides Dirge. And it was located in an early version of Quadrant G1 on an unused area known as Dune. Several rumors were spread about this thing, and none of them not being true. Including those such as it being the strongest Colossi they ever made, and even as it being the final Colossus of the game. Which was not true whatsoever, especially since it did not share the Evis name. And the only ones that shared that was the old designed Final Colossus of Evis. And the Evis we have now, which is Malice. Despite these several rumors, it's completely unknown of why Worm was cut. My personal theory is that there's just way too many Serpent Colossi. And having a fourth one would have been kind of ridiculous. Because you have Hydras, you have Dirge, you have Phalanx. I don't think Worm could have been in the game with it being meaningful whatsoever. Especially with all those other Colossi. So, I think out of those four, Worm probably would have been the one to cut. And along with that, Worm couldn't have fit anywhere to be unique. It was listed to be in a Sandy Dune area, which is essentially Dirge and Phalanx. So, it would have just been another one of the Serpent Colossi that could have that was just easily forgotten and i think that I, I believe that's why it got cut in the final game but you can state your personal reasons that is that my reasonings are based off of just theories so there is no uh, founded evidence upon that the last big unused colossi that we have information for is yamori a 
And I briefly touched on this to Colossus way back when we fought Kuramori for the first time. It's a very similar, uh, similar design to Kuramori. It sharing its design with both Yamori B and your, uh, Yamori C. And weirdly enough, Yamori A never carried a dev name unlike all the other cut colossi. According to Ueda, it was a colossus that you chased down while uh, you were climbing the walls and the strategy to defeat it was to grab onto its back with a backward jump. I figured it'd be pointless to show the same thing twice, so I narrowed it down to one. Which is a very fair reason. <laughs> It would have lived in at B3, or Quadra B3, in an unused area named Suisse, or Suis, S-L-U-I-S-E, or C-E, my bad. Besides other sketches and similarities to both Yamori B and C in the art book, nothing's really known about that unused colossi. Some of its state being in a old coloss, or was it a coliseum, kind of like how our now Yamori, which is Kuramori, resides other stated being in a forest so that's kind of cool and i'm not really saddened about yamori a not being in the game whatsoever now for a fun thing parachute off the ledge it always drains your strength but hey i think it's cool the last thing i want to talk about when talking about cut content is data mined colossi these are colossi that seldom had any yeah. uh, sketches whatsoever and were just never really implemented into the game whatsoever. These were mostly just concepts that either were talked around probably in the office or some very early sketches or even lines that were find, uh, found in the PS3 data sheets. So, a lot of these were only found in the PS3 data sheets and otherwise we have no official information on them and were likely rejected extremely early in development. In some of these cases, they weren't even developed. The one we have the most amount of information on is one named Buffalo, which was a smaller colossus like Stenobia and Celosia. All we know is of its existence through a piece of text. Otherwise, we don't know anything about it. There are several other ones, and several other ones were likely early design concepts for other colossi. For example, Snake 2 th was theorized to be an early design of Dirge. Knight 2, which was a really cool uh, design of him, it was th it's theorized to be an alternate version or an early design of Gaius. That is all we know about that. Saru 2 which is likely just an alternative de uh, design of, well, Saru. So that's all we really know about that. Tobio, or Tobiu, it's, uh, it's spelled T-O-B-I-U-O. Uh, it translates to flying fish in Japanese, and it's theorized to be an early design of Hydrus. Now a really interesting one, Yeti. A completely unique colossus, and it's only known from a line of text reference in its name in the PS3 data sheets. There's nothing else yeah. known about Yeti. We don't even have concept art or anything else. We just know of its existence from very early on in development. Snake A and B, which again are thought to be variant serpent, uh, yeah, variant versions of serpent-like colossi such as Hydrus or Phalanx. Now, one that I mentioned earlier was Kubinaga. And Kubinaga is kind of strange. It also had two different names. Uh, did I ever come to this area way off here? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. I was just curious if I did. So, Kubinaga, or Kubi... Uh, was it Kubinaga? Yeah, there's Kubunaga and Kubinaga, which are the same thing. I think it's part of a mistranslation with the art book or something like that. I don't remember the specific reason of why it has two names. It was another original Colossus that translates to Stronghold Dragon and Long Neck. Ueda really wanted a Long Necked Giant Colossus to fight, which eventually turned into what Rock was. And it most likely would have been a Dragon or Flying Serpent type Colossus, kind of like Phalanx. Another cool one that I kind of wish we got was Quetzalcoatl, which 
Only has text of it having scaly skin. Otherwise, nothing's known on it besides some armor that's related to Phoenix. It likely reused some armor textures from Phoenix or Phoenix was made through those armor textures. Last one is Griffin B. It's likely just an early version of Cynelosia uh, since they share the same texture namings and yeah, they're just very similar. So, I came all this way over here because, man, it is dark and dreary. Why, why is it dreary? Jesus. This is one of the Stonehenge-looking features that I wanted to mention that's associated with Sirius. So, if you're wondering what that kind of looked like, it's still within the game here in the final version. So, and I know this is very long-winded as it is. I'm not keeping a time limit on this episode whatsoever because there's a lot I want to cover. I want to head towards the Eco Beach, so I'll be doing that as we're talking about more stuff. One of the last things, and I'm unfortunately not going to show this off because it's really difficult to actually obtain, and it would elongate the series by another like whole another playthrough or two if I were to do that. So that coin we picked up, we saw another one like it right before the arena with Barba back on the hard mode time trials. Or not time trials, just the hard mode journey. This was... Uh, it's strange. Also, I realize I should have went way different direction, but I think it's fine. It's fine. Actually, yeah, no, I have to come over through here because I have to get towards Barba's arena. So, the coins in the game are a giant collectible that was added within the PS4 version. There are a lot of them. To the fact where I forgot how many there are. I had to look that up real quick because I did not have that in my notes. There are 79 coins scattered throughout the entirety of this game. Some of which are in really, really, really weird locations. One of them being at the top of the bridge, which you kind of expect there being a secret up there, but some of them include that rock formation right outside of Barbas Arena. Some of them, and I think it's one in particular, one of them is located within Malice's Arena for some reason. Yeah. So, it's hard to get all of the coins. It is extremely hard to get all the coins. Now, there are guides out there. Unfortunately, I will not be that guide because I don't see... It, it's such a huge thing to go and get, and the reward you get for it is not that crazy. It's kind of cool, though. If you collect all 79 coins, you will get a unique weapon called the Sword of Dormin. This is a really cool-looking sword. I, I should have a picture up here already. What this thing does is... It is an extremely powerful sword, but it also takes up your health when using it. And it's only the only sword that really does that. It inflicts massive damage, but it reduces the rate of Wander's health regen, is what I meant. And weirdly enough, in the hilt of the sword, there is a Colossus Eye in it. So, along with that, when you hold it up to the sky it shoots a dark beam of light instead of a white one. Otherwise, there's nothing really to say about that. There's not much really known about the sword and most theorize that it's kind of just a physical amalgamation of what Dormine is and you kind of get to just use Dormine on your trips. Again, I'm not gonna be showing off the sword because I have never gotten it and getting it is extremely difficult because you pretty much have to play through the whole game while also collecting the coins as you're doing that. It's very difficult to go and get, so I just don't recommend actually going for it. I think there is a trophy associated with it, but again, that's not my cup of tea. I can at least talk about it while also still showing it off in some manner, I guess you could say. So, that's pretty much all of the cut stuff that I wanted to talk about. One last thing, 
and I I did the go through the forest in nighttime thing a while back, so I'm not going to go and do that again. I kind of just wanted this to be a traveling episode while also talking about a bunch of unused Colossi stuff. The last place I want to go to is the Eco Beach. Not that it has any, any yeah, yeah. physical meaning for me or anything like that, but I figured it's a nice yeah. enough little location to end things off, especially since, well, that's where things yeah. ended on yeah. Eco. Yeah. Granted, I have never done that <laughs> LP, and I've yeah. never even played Eco, but I own it on the PS3. I wish it got remastered to PS4, well, PS5, I guess now. And man, look at that, man. That just looks insane. This game is just so pretty. The exploration is just out of this world, man. I, I love it to death. I really do feel that this was a massive precursor to Breath of the Wild and I guess any other giant open world games like this because at the time of its release, those were unheard of. Just a giant open world to your heart's content. Keep in mind, this was originally a PS2 game, so yeah, crazy. It's crazy things. So, we can look around the beach here. And I believe there is a little Easter egg if you find it. There should be like a watermelon down here or something like that. Which is a reference to one of the endings to Eco. So, man, this is giving me some Bloodborne vibes. Uh, whoa, what the balls, aggro? I just wanted to go around here, buddy. Jesus, chill. It'd also be kind of cool if you heard like eco himself talk for a second or something like that i think it'd be kind of creepy but funny as a cool little easter egg but i digress aggro really does not like it down here but this is the closest to water you can really ever get besides just jumping down into some boss's arena well i guess that's not true you got the kuramori water thing uh is it down here i'm not exactly sure of where this watermelon is I don't even think this is where they landed. No, it's not. Eh. I'm not going to be fretting too much about it, but I wanted to show this off because I promised you guys I was going to show this off, and yeah. And I know some of you guys have said, like, you should go explore some of these areas. You should go and see what there is to find. While one, that would also take a very long time to do, and not that I'm opposed to doing that. It kind of feels weird for me if I were to go and explore that and just have you guys watch it. I think there's a lot of mysteries in this game that are left best off to somebody else's personal experience. Now, again, exceptions to this were the Secret Garden and the Eco Beach. And there's probably a million other areas that you could go to that have really no other meaning besides it just existing. So... As with that, I will leave that to you guys and to your guys' heart's content to go and explore around those areas if you so wish, because I don't think I should have the glory of, well, showing these areas off and having my own impressions of it when the game clearly wants you to go and experience it for yourself. Yeah. So, that's my take on it. But anyways, that's it. That is everything which with shadow of the colossus and can i just say thank you so so much to you guys in the comments for those who are watching now and later in the future you guys have made this lp super special and it makes me so happy because i wanted to redeem myself on this game for a long time and i was finally able to do it so I thank you guys for allowing me to redeem myself with this. And it really isn't redeeming, more say. I wanted to give the attention this game deserved. And now that I'm a better LPR overall, I feel great to know that I was able to accomplish that. And it's thanks to you guys in the comments for a lot of suggestions, a lot of comments, and things that I just didn't know about the game. You guys also artificially increase the length of this game's lifespan for more than double of what I had originally planned for it. So, I thank you guys so much for making this LP something amazing. And I'm really going to look back on this LP with fond memories. It was a really, really fun adventure. 
and multiple adventures, I should say. So, thank you guys for watching from the past and, well, to the future. And, I guess, the current, if you're watching this right when it comes out. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to leave things off for Shadow of the Colossus for good. I'm going to miss this world. <laughs> it was a crazy one. Next time on whatever we do next, I think we'll be investigating a dark hour. I'll just leave it at that. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.